Right, morning everyone. As promised, videos of hydro testing a fiber wrapped or composite paintball cylinder. So, I'm actually going to start with this. This is the actual test rig. This big blue drum, I suppose you call it, in front of me is the actual water jacket unit itself. Um, this particular one was custom built for us. Uh, that's actually made of um, six more plate steel so it actually what it weighs a rather sizable amount um, and then obviously it's full of water as well I think it weighs close to about um, a quarter ton um, there are a whole lot of fittings on top that connect up to our test panel um, just off here we have a most medically powered hydraulic pump this enough power to literally blow the gauges out um, and these go around to um, over 700, you know, about 700 atmos atmospheres which is a huge amount so it's a huge amount of knobs and dials hence you need you do need to be a trained operator to use these things um, this here is actually a burette which comes up in other videos for testing for a water jacket test, we don't actually use this. We only use it for normal stretch testing. So, what we use instead is scales, and this gives us an accuracy of 0.02 grams, or in this particular case, because we're measuring fresh water, but 0.02 cc's. Um, so, you set the machine up, you get it all ready to go, you put your coffee cup on here it throws this out. It is that sensitive. Um, so you know, it's rather complicated and simple at the same time. Once this is all set up, it tends to start resembling a giant espresso machine. So, next thing is the bottles. Now we're starting to get to the business end of this series. Um, this is obviously a paintball cylinder. Now, for those that don't know, um, and for those that do, just bear with me. Um, these cylinders are, in my opinion, actually quite incredible. They're a thin aluminium cylinder to start with, and the way they actually make aluminium cylinders, I find rather spectacular. Um, then they wrap it in carbon fiber and then the carbon fiber is then wrapped with fiberglass as you can just see it through here and then over the fiberglass they put a um, clear gel coat now the gel coat and the fiberglass protect the carbon fiber they're not actually obviously structural at all they're actually sacrificial so obviously any damage to the cylinder we can usually repair it unless there's damage to the carbon fiber, if there's any damage to the carbon fiber um, the cylinder is scrap basically this is more an issue with um, BA cylinders for firefighting because they tend to get a lot more abuse than what paintball cylinders do because most people tend to run sleeves and things on them whereas the fire department's not actually allowed to now for anyone else not in New Zealand just bear with me I'm actually I will be testing these to New Zealand standards and pretty much all the information that, I'll, that I've been giving and will be giving is around the New Zealand standards um, so obviously New Zealand has may have different slightly different standards to what you'd find in say the States or England so or anywhere else in the world for that matter so just please bear with me now what I've done as I mentioned in a previous video these didn't actually have lab numbers um, even though they've actually been tested in New Zealand which they shouldn't have been so what I've actually done is I've processed an import certificate for them and have now glued a the proper lab number and the specific details for the cylinder onto the cylinder um, there's just a little bit of tape over it just because it gives it a much nicer finish and it stops sticky fingers when I'm handling it or if there's anyone else in the workshop they decide to pick them up and play with them which often happens 
So the next step is obviously the valves are already loose, so I'll take that out. I'll give it a thorough visual inspection uh, inside and out. And so the next time you'll see it, which will for the YouTube viewers will be in about sort of a couple of seconds, it will be on the stand and filled with water. The cylinders in the clamp, now bearing in mind this clamp was actually originally designed for dive cylinders, BAs, things like that, things that are somewhat bigger than what these little 1.1 um, paintball cylinders are. So, this is our adapter. We'll just screw that into there. Yet again, it's just an O-ring seal. So once we get it screwed down, we get the biggest crescent we can find. And we will just nip it up so it's just up against that O-ring. Now those that have a sense of humor are going to love this. So there's one adapter. We can put in another adapter. And this one's just as so you can get it by hand. Now what's going to make this look really funny is this. And this is the top plate of the water jacket unit. So we'll just carefully lower that down like that. Now underneath this plate is actually an O-ring which seals it against the displacement. The water jacket itself is not pressurised as such, but it is absolutely watertight. There's actually a burst disc on the water jacket, which is calibrated to about 25 psi. So it's not a huge amount. So yet again we just wind this down against the barrel, which gives us a good secure fit. And we don't have any fancy hydraulics, we just got a rope and pulley block. The clamp is operated by a pneumatic ram just sitting behind it. Now Bear in mind this is designed to take a lot more weight than what I've actually got on it here. So let's line up our four clamps. Let's take this off. Now, I mean, I've got a, there's a process for doing this and an order for it, so I'm not actually going to edit a lot of it out, so you will want to have to bear with me through actually setting this up. Um, for those that know nothing about a water jacket, this will give you a pretty good idea of the setup and what's actually involved. So, we'll just lock it down. That and then now we hook everything up. This one here is actually the main water supply for it, and this is predominantly used for just bleeding all the air out of the system. So, while I'm doing this, just quickly fill up the scales and make sure there's no air on the lines. And then move that back down. Now one last part. And this here is the high pressure system, which feeds obviously straight into the cylinder inside the water jacket. Now despite what these look like, these are not quick disconnect pneumatic fittings, they're actually proper high pressure hydraulic fittings. So don't get them confused. Um, they are designed specifically for what we're doing. So, next trick is I'll just quickly dry this off. All the water you can see on there um, during the test, so it 
tends to fall off and things like that and will actually throw out the readings a little bit. So we want it dry, which gives us a nice consistent um, readings between cylinders. So the first thing we've got to do when we run the test is our burette here uh, needs to be zeroed, which I've already done it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a rig check, so we're just going to make sure that we've got no leaks. Now when we do this we're only going to go up to working pressure, which in this particular case is 310 bar. Now on the wall here, usually on a whiteboard I'll write the result. So, I'll close that off. And just bear with me for the noise again, and we'll run this up to 310. So, we're at 310, and just so you know, we're running, we've now got 8 cc's of displacement from the cylinder, so as you can see, it's nowhere near as high as what you get from the 9 litres, but we wouldn't expect it to be. So now we'll bring this back down. The other thing we're checking for when we do this is, apart from leaks, is to make sure it also dissolves any air in the high pressure system. Same as a Coke, basically a bottle of Coke, um, so we get a more accurate reading. Now our residual is 1cc, 